Hey, what's up, everybody? Kaiju Lu here, and once again, from all of us here at Super Game Strikers, myself, Sega Sean, and Retro Nick, we want to wish each and every single one of you guys a happy new year, and uh, I hope it's been going good so far for each and every single one of you guys. But I thought right now, um, I thought we, I, I would like to start off 2017 with a quick recap of WWE in 2016. And um, I'm going to do this by pretty much uh, talking very briefly on some of the uh, big things I thought happened here in uh, 2016 in WWE with my own little version of the Slammies, if you will. So uh, without further ado, uh, let us get started here on what I think um, that were some of the best parts of WWE 2016. And once again, before I... Um, before I, before I get started, I just want to say that this is opinion-based, and um, whatever I say here, obviously it's my opinion, and if you guys think, differ think differently or disagree on it, then, you know, I completely respect that, but once again, this is opinion-based, so, yeah, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Alright, but uh, without further ado, let us jump right into this. Um, number one for me, the most entertaining superstar of the year um, in WWE in 2016 has got to be, hands down, Chris Jericho. Without a doubt, this guy, you can give him crap. You can give him complete and utter crap. And this guy will turn it into gold. I mean, it's Chris Jericho. He is honestly one of the best in the world at what he does. Sorry, CM Punk. But and this guy is the total package. He has always been the total package since um, coming to WWE. This guy has been in WWE now for over 17 years. One of the, probably one of the oldest veterans in the locker room. And this guy's got it all. This guy's got it all. This guy's done it all. And, um, 2016 has been another year for Jericho. Um, what with the what with what the list and the classic line, <coughs> excuse me, you stupid idiot, and uh, yeah, you know this guy can this guy can come back at any age at any time period, and he can still deliver. He can still run a mile a minute. This guy, without ever slowing down. It is amazing. It is very, very, very rare to see um, these things, you know, especially especially in the world of professional wrestling. And uh, Chris Jericho is definitely one of these rare gems that the, the company has. And uh, kudos to you, Chris Jericho. I've been watching him since I was a little kid. And yeah, so... <laughs> Oh man, so uh, yeah, like I said, this guy, whatever you give him, he turns to gold and he makes it work. So yeah, whether the list, the scarf, or the phrases, um, most entertaining superstar of the year, Chris Jericho. Um, the most improved superstar of the year, to me at least, this one was a little bit uh, tricky. This one I had to, hmm, not really tricky, but I had to sit and think about it for a little bit, and I don't know, it's, it's a little bit tough. I gotta say, to, in my opinion, in my opinion, the most improved superstar of WWE in 2016 has gotta be Braun Strowman. I, I, got, I gotta put my money on that, because... What a, what a huge transition for him. What a huge change. This guy, you know, um, I guess he started out as one of the, he, I, I remember being, I remember seeing him first as one of Adam Rose's Rosebuds. And then him joining the Wyatt family over a year ago, back in 20, uh, over, back in 2015, as this big, what, 6'8", 380 pound monster, the black sheep of the Wyatt family, but uh, still, as scary as he was and as dominant as he was, I didn't really think he was going to go anywhere. 
because I thought he was just gonna, you know, he was gonna have a good run, but, you know, the only thing he was gonna be good for was when he, you know, he spends his time with the Wyatts, but then after that, when that runs, when, you know, when the Wyatt family uh, has ran its course and uh, it's time for everyone to, to move on, Braun Strowman, I didn't really think he was gonna go anywhere because I never really, you never really hear the guy talk and you, you don't really see him rest so much or you don't really, you know, see him do much of anything. But 2016, um, complete change. Uh, the draft has done wonders for him. It really, really has. Um, because first of all, when, when I heard that, you know, the Wyatt family got drafted to SmackDown and Braun um, on his own by himself got drafted to Raw, I was a little bit hesitant at first. I was like, uh, this is probably the beginning of the end for this guy, but I'm going to be honest, boy, was I wrong. He has been dominating and dominating and dominating, and they really built him up to be something even more frightening than, you know, what he was as the black sheep of the Wyatt family. And, um, he's been really growing on his own, and, um, I've been becoming a real big Braun Strowman fan, and he is honestly legit, legit scary. <laughs> you know, scripted or not, I would never, I would not ever want to step in the ring with this guy. But, uh, yeah, there are other honorable mentions that I could bring up for most improved superstars. It's gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to say it, Roman Reigns was another candidate because he has you know whether you like him or hate him you gotta admit um he's improved he's really improved in 2016 you know he he he, he's more calm on the microphone uh even though he he whether his his mic skills have been has gotten better you know they they have they have they have gotten kind of better you know you can see him being more comfortable he's more lax and stuff, but uh, whether you know, uh, good on the mic or not, you you gotta admit this guy delivers in matches. He delivers, especially during his main event matches against Seth Rollins, against Rollins and Ambrose, and the Shield Triple Threat match, and especially to his series of matches against AJ Styles in the first half of the year for the title. It's um, he he delivers. Um, he, he, he brings, he brings, uh, real grade A matches. So, um, so yeah, I got, I got to give it to, uh, Roman with that one. Um, I got Baron Corbin in mind too, because Baron Corbin, um, uh, then again, you know, I'm going to be honest, 90% of Baron Corbin in 2016 has been, um, not so good. It wasn't until later, way late until 2016, that this guy really started impressing the hell out of me. He really has, especially with, you know, the last main event of SmackDown, the triple threat for the WWE title between himself, uh, Ziggler, and Styles. Five-star, A-plus main event match. All three did so well, especially Corbin. Even though he didn't win, um, he was put in the main event scene, and he and it really shows um, and, and kind of really establishes himself as as a very powerful and dominant force. Um, and what he could be in the in the WWE um, in the future. So who knows? Maybe 2017 uh, might be. The, the year of Corbin. Who knows? We're going to have to wait and see. Um, another improved superstar that I can think of is, uh, well, once again, this is last minute, Neville. Um, when he entered the cruiserweight division and uh, has been dominating the cruiserweight scene. But once again, um, last minute, very last minute thing. Like Baron Corbin, because even before that, nothing much has been going on with Neville. It was even bad to the point where um, he was almost completely forgotten, which was very sad, very sad, because that it could have been a real waste of talent. But um, once again, most improved superstar, in my opinion, of 2016, Braun Strowman. Let us move on to Tag Team of the Year. This was real hard to think of. I, I know people would think it's the New Day again, but I don't really think so. Since the, you know, I'll be honest, ever since the beginning 
of 2016, at least the second half of 2016, the New Day, I thought, ran its course. I really thought they did. I thought that they've really, they've really gone, they've, they've gone stale. They've really ran their course. I'm sure I'm not the only one who, who, who agrees on this or, or thinks or, 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 or has, or has believed in this, but, uh, they, they've really ran their course. It, it was time to move on. It was time to drop the tag team titles and give it to another deserving team. But I know, I guess, WWE planned it since the beginning that, you know, these were the guys that they wanted to um, break Demolition's uh, tag team title reign record. So, and they did just that. But after that, they lost. They dropped the belts immediately um, to Cesaro and Sheamus at Roadblock. But, um... Tag Team of the Year, I'm going to have to give it to the club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Why? Very, very, very um, underrated tag team to the point where it is criminal. <laughs> because tag team division hasn't really been that strong in 2016. It really hasn't because besides them, look at the other tag, team that, tag teams that we've had. You know, we've had Enzo and Cass. They haven't really done anything since going to the main roster. They've been really misused. We had the Vaude villains. They got they had a push in the early part of 2016, but it just stopped and they became pretty much the Ascension 2.0 and then there's the Ascension, which that's a lost cause. We've had the Shining Stars. No. <laughs> We've had the New Day, aka the Stale Day. Then there's Cesaro and Sheamus, Cesaro and Sheamus, but I felt like, once again, that was a last-minute thing, because that I felt like they really put them together as a last-minute thing, because they haven't, they really haven't had strong tag teams right now, so I want to give it to them, because it, that was another thing put in, put together last minute, so I'm going to have to give it to Gallows and Anderson, because these guys were top stars in Japan, members of Bullet Club, these guys were amazing. They were top stars back in New Japan. These guys were champions, um, very experienced, very well established, but um, the way they were treated in WWE, um, they were off to a strong start as the club with AJ Styles, but after the, uh, after the draft, these guys really, really came to a screeching halt and stuff, and uh, they were kind of jobbing for a little bit to New Day and Cesaro and Sheamus, but uh, right now, from what I've been seeing on Raw, things have been somewhat picking up for them, but I hope. The, uh, I was, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just frustrated because they should have, these guys should have been the ones to beat the New Day a long time ago. They should have gave these guys the titles a long time ago. And I could see them holding the titles for at least a good half a year and stuff, you know, because they can do it. They can do it. They are that good. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. So I'm going to have to give Tag Team of the Year in WWE 2016 to these guys. And uh, I'm sure plenty of you might agree, you know, a lot of, especially a lot of uh, Bullet Club fans out there. So uh, shout out to all you guys. Um, shocking moment of the year. I'm going to easily... Goldberg squashing Brock Lesnar in 1 minute and 26 seconds at the 2016 Survivor Series match. Um, <laughs> do I need to say enough? Do I need to say, uh, excuse me, do I need to say more? <laughs> need I say more? Because I guess, I guess too in a way... This kind of reminded me of how it how how it has been for Goldberg, like 90% of his whole entire career, especially even before going to WWE when he was in WCW, because it makes sense because that's how long his matches have had always been in his early part of his career. Um, I heard too, you know, he really couldn't keep up with Brock because number one it's been 12 years since he stepped into a ring he he probably is not even in the nowhere near uh, the best of shape and I heard he also got injured even before the pay-per-view but once again this is how a Goldberg match is ring the bell 
Spear the, toss the guy around a bit, spear the guy, jackhammer, one, two, three, and that's the match. That's how it's always been, so I felt like this was appropriate in a way, where, you know, <laughs> um, Goldberg squashing Lesnar is kind of a homage to his dominance in WCW and how his matches have always been, you know, now that I think about it. Um, one or two months later, and also to um, for Lesnar, it's it, to me it was the case of a bully um, that got humbled, and um, now he's crying about about it because he got humbled. So, yeah. Um, move on. Feud of the year. Another tough one to think about, but once again, my opinion. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say. Um, maybe this will shock all of you guys. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Fight forever. Fight forever. Fight forever. My God, I can see these guys fight forever. And I'm sure you, most of you guys can too. Because um, they, they, these two amazing athletes, amazing, amazing wrestlers. These guys go a long way back, and uh, the first half of 2016, this was this was like what almost a half a year long feud between the two of them that eventually concluded at the 2016 Money in the Bank, uh, their one on one match at Money in the Bank 2016, which was also a hell of a match, and. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really see any other feuds that are really, you know, that were really, you know, memorable or that really caught my attention as much because it, it, rest have been kind of stale. This has been the only one that I can think of as the most memorable feud of 2016. At least it's the first thing that popped in my head when I thought about it. <laughs> So, yeah, and I guess it's going hand in hand because this would be the feud of the year. Next up, I got the match of the year. And once again, the match of the year to me was Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, Money in the Bank 2016. And also, I have to bring this up um, as an honorable mention, even though uh, this is strictly WWE stuff. Honorable mention, if it was up to me, if it was for both WWE and NXT, for match of the year, easily, hands down, Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Nakamura's debut match at NXT TakeOver Dallas. And uh, five stars. Five stars. I have watched that match dozens of times. I can watch that match over and over and over again for the rest of my life and will never get tired of it. That was That match was nothing short but perfection. Five stars, ten out of ten, amazing. And I, I, I probably sound like a broken record here that I'm, you know, and that I'm Sami Zayn's biggest fan here. But yeah, it's no secret that I love Sami Zayn. And to me, too, Sami Zayn is has been the most underutilized and underused talent that WWE has had in 2016. I know some people might disagree, might think of Cesaro, but uh, at least Cesaro. Something, you know, at least Cesaro kind of did stuff in 2016. What with winning the, you know, beating the New Day and winning the tag team titles with Sheamus. But Sami Zayn, after after his huge win against Kevin Owens at Money in the Bank and getting drafted the Raw, nothing has really been going on much for Sami Zayn except feuding with Braun Strowman and just being around, you know, um, jobbing to guys once in a while. But... That's nothing other than that, nothing much has been really going on. And to me, that's also criminal because very, 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 very underutilized and underused. Such an incredible talent. But uh, yeah, once again, feud of the year and match of the year. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Um, female superstar of the year. I'm going to have to give it to Charlotte. This is a tie, in my opinion, to both Charlotte and and Sasha Banks. And I know this was another thing that's gone real stale, real fast. This was pretty much what was been going on with the women's division throughout most, you know, half a year in 2016. Um, not even more than half a year. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. 
And it's been going on back and forth. They've been really hot potatoing the Raw Women's title as of late. <laughs> uh, with, you know, with Charlotte, I guess they've been setting her up to be undefeated at pay-per-views. And Sasha Banks winning it on Raw about three times now. Three times over. But these, these, these girls have really been pioneering the women's division. They have really elevated it to new heights and to show what these female superstars can do and that they can be just as exciting and just as entertaining and they can hype up the crowd just as, you know, just as much as what the men could do. So uh, once again, female superstars of the year, I'm going to have to give it to both Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Um, superstar of the year? Um... (laughs) This might be a big shocker to you guys, but Superstar of the Year, I'm going to have to give it to The Miz. Why? Because I know everyone's like, Kaiju Lu, you're crazy. AJ Styles, AJ Styles all the way. And don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I love AJ. I love AJ Styles. But I don't know. I mean, his appearance in WWE was great and all. But ever, but ever since his, you know, debut at the 2016 Royal Rumble, um, the first half of 2016, AJ Styles kind of got off to a real slow start. It was real slow for AJ. I mean, come on, you know, he debuted in the Rumble, a great debut, didn't win it, feuded with Jericho for a little bit, which was a very, very weird and creepy feud. That, that, that lasted all the way to WrestleMania. He lost at WrestleMania, which I don't know why, because that was one of the most pointless wins in history. He should have just gave the win to AJ and stuff, because Jericho has already established himself as a superstar and Hall of Famer. He doesn't really need... He didn't really need this WrestleMania win. And, um... And then he started, you know, feuding with Reigns for the WWE title, had a couple of title matches with him, his first main event scene... Didn't win any of them, and then, you know, it wasn't until the second half of 2016 when he started feuding with John Cena and had had the huge heel turn that things started picking up for him. He beat John Cena twice, clean, by the way, which really elevated his WWE career um, as a main event player, and um, eventually, long story short, won the title from Dean Ambrose. In a series and had a series of matches with him. So, uh, yeah, that's been pretty much what's been going on with AJ Styles 2016 in a nutshell. And uh, The Miz, I was never really a big fan of The Miz. I mean, I was, I, I never really cared for him. I had nothing to say about him ever since I watched him when I was like in high school. But, um, The Miz, I know lots of people were pissed. Believe me, I was pissed. When, you know, Ryder, Zack Ryder lost the IC title after his huge WrestleMania win, defeating like, what, six, seven other guys in a ladder match, then he losing it later the next night on Raw to the Miz of all people. But Miz, this was his year. This was his year. WWE must have a lot of faith in this guy after, you know, defeating Ryder. He lost it eventually to, like, what, half a year later, the second half, to to Dolph Ziggler, but eventually won it again, like, a month later from Ziggler. And here we are again, being a six-time Intercontinental Champion. But, uh, yeah, it's been his year. He's been really impressive. He's been one of the, if not the top heel of WWE in 2016 and uh, he's really had a he's really impressed the hell out of me and I have developed a new brand new respect for The Miz especially with his uh, with his uh, pipe bomb as you call it on Talking Smack when he had his little lashing out uh, uh, to Daniel Bryan and I don't know whether it was that that really took me away that really blew me away I some people said it was scripted, others said it was real. Whether this was a work or a shoot, um, after here, after listening to that, I have developed a whole new respect for The Miz. I mean, so once again, you know, he's been very entertaining, very good. Best thing in the world was him having his wife by his side, Maurice. That, that's really helped him, and um, but yeah, Miz has been nothing short of amazing this year, so I, I'm going to have to give 
Superstar of the Year for WWE in 2016 to The Miz. And uh, a couple of extra bonuses here that I want to talk about. Um, my, my own little, my own little award. <laughs> to me, the most inspiring wrestler of the year overall, even though this is a little bit outside of WWE, has got to be Cody Rhodes. Because Cody Rhodes, God bless you, buddy. You are a true inspiration, and you really show, you are a prime example of showing that WWE is not the be-all or end-all for of wrestling careers. It is not, you know, do or die. It is, you know, you can even, there is life outside of WWE in professional wrestling. You, you prove that. Cody has been a, has been much bigger and greater than he has ever been during his tenure in WWE ever since leaving leaving the company back in early 2016. He has been bigger and better than ever, and he has been performing all over the world and in different promo promotions such as TNA, WCPW, ROH, Evolve Wrestling, and um, I think, I'm not sure if, if he already has, or I, I have to check on it, but New Japan as well, and so right now he has been in very, very high demand right now, and um, he has been nothing short of impressive, whether his match with Jay Letho, um, Kurt Angle, Chris Hero, Cody has been amazing, really amazing, and uh, like um, like his theme song says, hard times really, really, really do breed better men, and uh, Cody, once again, you have been an inspiration, and to me, you're the most inspiring wrestler of 2016. And before closing out this uh, WWE 2016 analysis video, here's a little bonus special. A kind of mini Royal Rumble 2017 early predictions. <laughs> um, after thinking about it, you know, I I'm sure Retro Nick is going to do his own predictions video for the uh, 2017 Royal Rumble. But um, who I think is going to win the Rumble this year, after thinking about it, because... At first, I honestly have no idea. I have no idea who is set up to win the Rumble this year, but I'm going to have to say The Undertaker. The Undertaker is going to win the 2017 Royal Rumble. Why? Because of... It's already been established that one of the main events is going to be Styles defending the WWE World title against Cena. And, um... Yeah, so... We all kind of know what's going to happen there. You know, uh, Styles is most likely going to drop the belt to Cena because Cena, they have him, they, WWE wants him, wants to set up him breaking Ric Flair's record of being a 16-time world champion. Um, they, they, they want Cena to do it. Cena is the man to do it for them. So uh, we're going to have that. And which obviously Cena is probably going to hold the title all the way to Mania, or probably defend it at Mania. And um, Taker wins it, challenges Cena for the title, and there you go. You got your main event, and we all know what is pretty much going to happen after that. So, yeah. <laughs> so you, you guys can use your imagination right there. But uh, to me... For my Royal Rumble 2017 prediction, the person who's going to win this year is none other than Taker. Um, also, to some surprise entries, um, what I who I the superstars that I think that are going to appear in the Royal Rumble as surprise entrants, hundred percent guaranteed for sure. At least to me, it's got to be Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is definitely going to be part of the 2017 Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant because there's nothing there's nothing else left for him to do at NXT there honestly isn't and I feel like you know at least by 2017 they're going to move him up to the main roster and I will honestly be shocked as hell if Joe is not in the Royal Rumble um another person I think it's going to be in the Rumble maybe maybe Finn Balor I'm not sure if he is still really hurt or if you know, he, he still is not able to compete to a couple of more months. I I, re I, I forgot how long he's, he's going to be out for. Or he's been out since after SummerSlam. So 
I don't know how much longer, but who knows? Maybe he'll surprise the hell out of us in the, in the Rumble by appearing as well. And the third surprise entrant that I think might show up? Something tells me Kurt Angle. Something, something, something tells me Kurt Angle. It's a bit of a stretch. It's, it's a bit of a not likely thing, but I don't know. I think Kurt Angle might show up. I don't know if he's still under contract in some other promotion or somewhere else in the indies, but I don't know. Uh, because it's a guarantee. It's already a guarantee fact that Kurt Angle's going to come back. He, he is, no doubt, going to make a return in WWE sometime soon. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, something tells me that Kurt Angle might make a little appearance at the Rumble. But for sure, out of these three guys, Samoa Joe will definitely for sure be a surprise entrant. But uh, once again, we're, we're going to have to wait and see till uh, late January. I'm excited for the Rumble. What about you guys? What did you guys think of this uh, analysis video and the list I have made here on what I thought of WWE in 2016? You guys, don't be shy. Feel free to, to express your opinions down in the comments below. But other than that, um, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Super Game Strikers here on YouTube. And please be sure to like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is Kaiju Lu. Thank you guys so much for listening. And please stay tuned for more future content to come. And take care. Happy 2017.